Kicking the Debt Collectors Out of Court, Jurisdictional Issues in Debt Collection Cases. Brought to you by YourLegalLegUp.com, your advantage if you are being sued by debt collectors. In this video, we'll discuss what happens when the debt collector doesn't show its ownership of the debt or when you're not properly served with the lawsuit. Although both issues involve the court's power to hear the case, they call for very different responses from you. When debt buyers buy a, bring a lawsuit, their ownership of the debt is always in question. It won't be their name on the debt instrument or contract, and they will have purchased the debt, gotten it by assignment. There's nothing wrong with that, let me emphasize. Most debts are freely transferable unless either a contract or the law says that they can't be transferred, so in most cases, this will not be an issue. But what is an issue is proof of ownership. Only the true owner of a debt is permitted to bring a lawsuit. In a way, that's a no-brainer, isn't it? If I happen to hear that someone owes you money, I can't sue them for it, can I? No, if I want to sue, I must prove that I am the true, own, true party in interest. Without the true party in interest participation, the court does not really have jurisdiction over the subject matter of the case. If I bring suit on a debt someone else owes you, and that person gets around to pointing out that I don't own the debt, the case should be dismissed immediately, without prejudice. If the person being sued does show that the plaintiff cannot prove ownership, the proper response by the court is to dismiss the case immediately without taking any other action. It can't make a judgment about the validity of the debt without the real owner being pr present, right? You can attack ownership of the debt at any time, and in a debt case you should always contest the issue, not only because you might win, but also because debt collectors actually try to collect debts that don't belong to them fairly often. You should always make them prove it. In the case of big junk debt buyers, they often will have a so-called bill of sale between the original creditor and the junk debt buyer. It will say that the creditor is selling and assigning umpteen million dollars worth of debts to the debt collector. It will mention an attachment with the numbers of uh, the accounts that are sold. And it will often not have that attachment or anything else linking your account to that sale. That is inadequate proof of ownership. It is no proof of ownership, really. If you attack the case on that basis, it should be dismissed, unless the debt collector can supply the information. For some reason, they often can't. You can make this argument at any time. It isn't waived by your participation in the case. And any time you can prove the debt ownership isn't established, the case should go away. Sewer service is another thing. What happened in the case we were discussing in a recent um, teleconference was that the process server claimed that the petition had been served, swore to it in fact, whereas in fact the defendant's daughter watched the process server throw the petition into a ditch. This happens often. The process server then swore to completed service and the person being sued has a choice ignore the matter and attack the judgment later or attack the court's jurisdiction or directly and immediately. We normally think that the direct attack is better because if there is a judgment everything is riskier and there's often damage to, cr to the credit report that's a lot of trouble to fix. The way to attack is through what's called a motion to quash. The essence of the motion to quash is that the service was not effective, that it didn't in some way comply with the required man manner of service on the defendant. Required in what way? Required to make it fair for the court to take jurisdiction over the person of the defendant who's being sued. For this reason, this issue is also often called personal jurisdiction or in personam ju jurisdiction. It's the right of the court to exercise power over the person of the defendant. The important thing to remember about this type of jurisdiction, jurisdictional issue is that it can be waived, that is, let go. If you do not immediately attack the service of process, let's say you file an answer first, you will have consented legally to the courts exercising jurisdiction over the case, and you. Your state rules of civil procedure will tell you in the pleading section what types of motions must be brought before you answer. And there are actually several other kinds of bases for attacking the suit that must be brought before answering. If you have any concerns about how you came to get sued, or how you heard about the suit, or the wording or language used in the suit, or anything else that makes you wonder whether it's fair to be sued 
by this defendant at this time and in this way, look in the rules of civil procedure and think about it before you file an answer. Sometimes after filing the answer, it's too late to, f to bring your best attack on the case. Protect what's yours and don't let the debt collectors rip you off. yourlegalaga.com